Hi everyone, this is Brittany Bond, and welcome back to the podcast. Today I'm feeling a lot of activation, a lot of power, and a lot of clarity, and I'm excited to share this with you, um, sharing all the downloads as we do. Um, something that I really believe in my life is that everything happens for us. Everything is an opportunity for our activation, for our growth. I also believe that everything is an opportunity for more connection. Um, and <laughs> the connection that I'm having right now with myself through a lot of the things that are happening in my life right now is with myself. <laughs> so that's a funny thing to say, but like I have spent most of my life ori orientating, orientating from the perspective of taking care of everyone else around me and you know for most of my life I've had a primary partner I, I was married at 18 for six years and after that I went from one relationship to another so even when I was exploring non-monogamy I had a partner right and right now I'm in this really beautiful extent expansion mode where I am fully choosing myself and I'm fully choosing to drop into my own power and speak up for myself. It's like, so this is a download that a friend of mine had gave me yesterday, which I already knew this download. And it's just something <laughs> I always say in life that we come back to the same point. Usually like everything's a spiral, right? Our DNA is a spiral. The universe is a spiral, the Fibonacci sequence, all the things. And we come back to the same point over and over again of these deep lessons that our soul wants us to learn. And the opportunity for growth is to come back at it from a higher perspective, learning more, understanding more, being more in our power. And the download that was given to me yesterday, which I already kind of knew, was that um, it is really easy for me to use my power, like this inner fire that I have, on behalf of the people that I care about. So on behalf of my community, on behalf of my family, my soul family, my animals, <laughs> you know, like if you ever see my dog in a like a fight with a street dog here, you will see this fire come out of me. It's just like I will stick my hand in the middle of the chaos and just rip this other dog off of my dog to the point where, you know, everyone else around me is like, what the fuck are you doing? And I'm like, I don't care. I'm here for my people. I'm here for my animals. I'm here for the people that I love about I, the people that I love. And my friend reflected to me yesterday. He was like, you do this for everyone else, but what about you? Like, where in your life are you actively sticking up for yourself? And, you know, I thought back, like, on the time where I was sexually molested as a kid. And then, like, when I was in my late teens, I ended up going to the police and, like, reporting this person who abused me. And there's specific moments in my life where I have stood up for myself, but... Um, not but, and <laughs> there are, of course, deeper ways that we can, deeper ways that we can show up for ourselves. And I feel like for my, for me being someone, like being who I am, who I am in my community and just this active force in the world who is like, hey, I'm a woman in my power. I'm doing my thing. You know, I don't give a fuck what anyone thinks about me. Like I'm going for it. And this is how I am in pretty much everything in my life. Ex and right now, the opportunity for growth for me is to do this in my uh, re romantic relationships. Um, I had a story where um, recently I connected with someone and we, you know, we had a really beautiful time. We met at the last play party and we had a beautiful time the last week like connecting after the play party and just dropping in like at first as friends and then going deeper and then there was a moment when he was at my house last week and <laughs> I was feeling very juicy in my body I was very ready to connect sexually and it just kind of evolved into this and then I paused the dynamic of what we were doing like rolling around and I said hey I need to have a conversation like this is me speaking up for myself and creating safety and he was like yeah of course like let's do it thank you for bringing this into the space and I shared with him like where I'm at right now in my dynamic of my emotional 
life, my emotional space is like, basically I'm in the middle of processing a huge betrayal from my last partner, heartbreak. And just in general, like a lot of bullshit that has happened between me and my last partner. Um, and there's a lot of shock that is still in my body. I still feel like, how can someone say that they love you and then do all these terrible things to you? You know, like how can someone, how is that a, how is that a person that I loved? Like there's like, there's this kind of like needing to come home to this reality and I am doing it step by step as I, um, as I come back to the island and, and go through different things uh, here. It's like, as I feel safer and safer in my body and as more time passes, it's like I unlock like one more thing that was really fucked up on my exit. And then I'm just like, okay, let's unpack this. What can we learn? Okay, let's feel this anger. Let's like really let this out, you know? And setting better boundaries and it's just like more, uh, more opportunity for me to be my power. So this situation with this new beautiful man is one of these where I said to him, I was like, you know, I've explored polyamory I'm usually someone who like when I'm single I'm like uh just do your thing I'll do my thing like kind of very like casual in the way that I in the past I have been uh within my community right within people that I feel safe to be this casual lovers and um at the time I felt that uh, that was creating freedom for myself um because I didn't want to be in a romantic dynamic you know in the past when I was single and I was just like I'm just doing my thing you do your thing let's just come together and have fun where I'm at right now is one I I just do not have the capacity this is why I said to him I was like I don't have the capacity to sleep with someone like to have sex have a sexual connection with someone while they are also having a sexual connection with other people or like open to it and it's not that I even want to date you it's just that I don't have the space and I choose to give the space that I would have given to that to myself right now like I am fully focusing on my healing process my empowerment process and this this guy was only here for another two weeks before he goes back to his home country and so I said to him, I was like, if you want to explore this, I'm super open. My body is very open right now. It's very excited. We've, you know, we've had a bunch of dates leading up to this where we were just talking about everything. There's a lot of values, alignment, support, encouragement, like just activation, activation, inspiration, a lot of positive energy going back and forth between us. Like sometimes we would just hang out and we wouldn't even talk. We would just like cuddle. And I feel like there was like a lot of things happening in the spirit world, like energetically. Anyway, so we're having this conversation, um, and um, and he was like, <laughs> well, that's a lot for me. Like, I don't know if I want to feel, like, locked down in this way, and da-da-da. Can't we just be, like, friends who make love? And it's interesting because... In the past, I would have totally been okay with this. And right now, I like got angry. I got triggered. I was like, <laughs> um, I just told you what I needed to feel safe. It wasn't just that, that. He was telling me I was being dramatic. He was like, I think you're overthinking this. I think we can just be casual. And I was like, I don't think you understand like where I'm at. And you're not getting curious about that. Instead, you are putting your opinions on me. And uh, I'm just not okay with anyone doing this in my life anymore and so I was like okay well if you don't want to do that it's totally fine but you don't need to like yeah project onto me basically and um and then I explained some more about how like <laughs> there's also a thing within the community here well I, I've experienced within my my community or not my community like the people here on the island is like everyone is so flowy and so like yeah free love and all this stuff but they don't have or they're not choosing to have the emotional responsibility to deal with people who people's emotions as they all make love to each other and still live within a very tight-knit community here and I shared about how with my last partner, you know, like the girl that he cheated on me with, she, I like, she was my friend. Like I invited her to the play party. Like, you know, like I had her in my life and she like did cacao at my ecstatic dances that I organized last fall, last high season. 
This is someone who I wasn't super close with, but she was within my community and I considered her a sister of mine. And this person, because <laughs> like there's so many reasons that I could go into, but those would be my projections, but I'll just say the truth, the facts, is the second I left for Japan, she uh, got with my partner and broke our agreements. And then was very much trying to get my partner to date her like wanted him to be her primary partner. So I shared this with this guy. I was like, this is not the first time this has happened to me on the island. It's actually like multiple times this has happened. And there's just something around when I start dating someone or when people see us out and they think that we're connecting or they assume that we're connecting, there is just something that happens where if a woman is not in her divine feminine and she's not actually honoring her truth, her shadow side can come out and... I just don't have space for this anymore. This is not my problem. Like those women can go. Those are not my people. Those are not my friends. Those are, those women can just go fuck themselves basically. Like I'm like, bye. Um, and at the same time, I have to be really aware that like another friend said to me, he was like, Brittany, you have this such an abundant life and you're so in your, you know, your sexual power, your freedom, this and that. And you're so sharing this with everyone in your community. You're like, yeah, come, come to my parties, come to my villa, come here, come there. And you're just like giving all this stuff away. But like, you're also making it available that like people can share your partner with me, with you, like in the past when I was in open relationships and they were like, this is a little too tempting for some women, you know? And <laughs> I didn't want to, I didn't, I didn't want to face that truth for a really long time. I was like, no. Also, on the one hand, like, I didn't, I didn't, I was like, this, is, this would be me and my ego if I thought that, like, this was a thing that happened. And then it just kept happening over and over and over again. And then I realized, okay, whatever it is, is whatever. Like, th you can go into those women's psyches. You can look at their shadows. You can decide for yourself. I don't care anymore. What I care about is that I am safe and that the people who are surrounding me create safety for me and that there's boundaries. Boundaries what I, is what I'm realizing is actually creates freedom in my life. I'm feeling really activated. Okay, I'm going to take a deep breath. <sighs> boundaries is what creates freedom in my life because it creates the freedom to move about my space feeling emotionally and energetically safe that all of the people that are interacting with me have my back, are loyal, and have my best interests at heart. And like care about me as a human and care about protecting my heart just like I would do with them. Because this is what I have to offer for my community and this is what I deserve to receive in response. And I'm saying this to you that like maybe you should also raise your standards of who you have in your life because I think especially within the spiritual community, this emerging spiritual community that we are all part of and that we're all like on the ground building, there is a lot of people who are so running into what I call the light. They are trying so hard to be positive and to, you know, <laughs> feel that they are enlightened in some way spiritually so that they can feel like they can drop in and deserve connection and feel like what they believe is a quote unquote good person, right? Like connected to source, connected to their conscious community. What a lot of them are missing is this. So that's like, yeah, that's us and our higher selves. You know, like we all have this connection to our soul, which can help us to understand things from a higher perspective. I live most of my life in this. What we have to be careful of is that we don't disconnect from our bodies having a human experience and what those bodies need in order to feel safe emotionally, energetically, and within our communities. Most people are bypassing this. When you hear someone say spiritual bypassing, that is them <laughs> not willing to face their shadows. That's them not willing to look at the things that they need to heal within themselves. And I was doing this for many years where I was like, you know, I could see how someone was just not spiritually evolved or they were immature and they had just completely fucked me over. And I was just like, it's fine. It's fine. And I wasn't allowing myself to connect to the human emotions that I had in my body, which was 
anger, like anger is when someone crosses your boundaries. Anger is just like, hey, you need to stay over there. You've crossed my boundaries. I wasn't even allowing myself to connect to my anger. I wasn't allowing myself to connect to like this deep feeling of sadness and hurt that is a natural human experience because I was worried that if I connected to those parts of myself, I would do something like, I, or hurt someone because I was angry. This is something that one is programmed from the spiritual community and two is programmed to us as women. That the best way that we can operate in the world and show up in order to feel connected and loved by the people that we want to love us and feel connected to is to like just be these happy, bubbly, yummy things all the time. But you know what being in the divine feminine is, is also being able to speak up for yourself, is also having this like really powerful energy that will protect you, your future babies, your animals, your tribe, like a woman in her divine en energy is something that should be feared. If, p if people are not willing to operate in a way that is creating safety for her and her people, because she has the power to stick up for herself. She is willing to use her energy to protect herself and her people. Most of us women in the world have been stripped from society of this. This is the inner divine masculine, which everyone has masculine and feminine energy in them. And most of us women are not operating from a perspective of our inner divine masculine being present in our lives. And so we run around feeling very unsafe in the world because we're not allowing this protector inside of us to stick up for ourselves, to set boundaries, to speak up, to move ourselves out of situations that are not serving us and get ourselves into situations and around people that actually feel safe in our body and are nourishing and supportive. And then what happens is when you suppress this divine masculine within yourself as a woman for so long, what ends up popping up is the shadow side of that which is the wounded masculine. And when you look at patriarchy, when you look at what people describe as toxic masculinity, this is actually, this is not masculinity. This is wounded masculinity. This is masculinity in its shadow side, in the negative sides of itself that feels unworthy, that feels like it, it needs to dominate in order to feel powerful because it actually feels very powerless that feels like it needs to prove itself and do things in the world in order to belong. Divine masculine energy is holding a safe container for yourself energetically, being able to speak up for your needs and set your boundaries and say, hey, this is not okay with me. You need to go. You don't belong in my life. Divine masculine energy is being able to show up in, a, in, a, in the world in a way where you are allowing your power to come through. And your power might piss some people off. Your power might mean that you have to let some friends go because they are no longer abiding by what creates safety for you. And that's okay. I invite you to do this in your life if you haven't already. So many women in the world today want to be in their feminine. They want to feel so yummy in their bodies. They want to feel safe to fully drop in and feel safe to receive. There is no way you are going to be able to do this, to drop fully in your divine feminine, if you first don't allow yourself to step into your divine masculine energy within your body. And it's actually a very easy thing to do if you know how to do this. I just made a whole course about this, which I'm very excited to release. That's a whole other thing. I want to get back to the story with this man. So he said I was being dramatic and just wanted to keep things casual. This is a lot of men in the world. I don't think that I'm not going to. Okay, fuck it. I don't believe that this is meeting my standards. And this is what I said to him. I was like, look, you know, there's so many men on the island that are like Peter Pan boys. They want all the fun things. They see, you know, this like feminine energy on the, on the island and they just want to like gobble it up. And basically they want all the fun stuff without taking any responsibility and being in the divine masculine, which is holding the container for safety for the people in their life, especially women 
which is being curious about, you know, what can create a better container for the emotionally for the women in their life and for the dynamics that they're in. And realizing that as the divine masculine, what will actually bring them the most satisfaction in their life is showing up for the people that they care about in a way that feels nourishing and supportive for those people that they love, especially women. So it's not a taking energy. It's a giving energy. It's like, how can I give to you as the divine feminine? Because I know that when I give to you and when I make your life even better than it already is, and when I create a safe container for you emotionally, Ah, you have the opportunity to unfold and expand and all of that energy is going to come back to the divine masculine a thousand times. It's exponential. So <laughs> anyways, this is why I said this guy in, in my own way. I mean, I <laughs> wasn't as... There's a lot of things that we said back and forth, but the main thing was I, I said, I'm, I, I'm no longer interested in having a romantic relationship with you um, because this is not meeting my standards. Like there's so many men that, like he even said to me when we first started connecting, he's like, you know, I've been following you online for like six months now and you have this image about you of just like this goddess, you know, woman who's fully in her sexual energy and her pleasure and the vibe that you give off is very unattainable like yeah you can look but don't touch you know and I said to him I said I am that way for most people you know like I actually it is a very special thing that I am opening my my energy to you and even as a friend and I brought this back up in this conversation I was like you know so many men want all the beautiful things that come with being with me you know like um, I am with this goddess, you know, a woman who's fully in her power and, you know, like runs play parties here on the island and everyone knows her and everyone looks up to her. And yeah, I'm with this woman, like from a social standpoint, that is, you know, a beautiful thing. Wow, I'm with this woman. <laughs> and all I was asking was to create safety for me emotionally right now while I heal and to make love in a safe container where we are only focusing on each other for the two weeks that you're here left, you know? And anyways, he shut down emotionally, which was also a thing, which is like, you know, I deserve to be with people who have, it's like, we're all playing this game of relating and connecting on different levels. And none of these are good or bad. There's no like judgment value of them, but it's just like when you have more emotional tools, you're playing the game at a higher level or like, you know, like say like people who know how to share their emotions, they're playing at level 15. People who know how to uh, express their emotions and hold space for the, the person that's receiving this emotion, this emotions for them, that's level 20. I'm playing at the level of like, I have been in seven long-term relationships with men, like partnerships where we're traveling the world. You know, we, we, <laughs> we have communities together, we have businesses together. And... <laughs> And like, also I host play parties, you know, like I have, ex like, because I host play parties, so many people come to me and share with me their, their stories around connecting and relating and sexuality. And so it's like, I really understand a lot of how humans connect to each other. When I'm sharing on these podcasts, like what I share with you is probably like 10% of what I explore within my psyche and within my friends and within my, with my clients that I coach, it's like, I'm giving you this little snippet, but it's really the tip of the iceberg. And so for me, a lot of people, they see me, like if you listen to this podcast, you're like, wow, Brittany's so open about her life. She's like just sharing everything. And I'm like, this is 10% of like, what is a hundred percent of my emotional depth and what I'm actually experiencing and exploring within my psyche and my body. And for someone to come into that reality, someone who, who I'm going to share my body with sexually and who I'm going to like be intimate in all ways, 
I choose and I deserve to be with someone who can meet me at that level emotionally. Even if they don't understand what's going on in their bodies, they're still willing to be curious about it, to slow down, to check in, to be curious about what's going on in my body and to really hold space for all of this. Like that is what the divine masculine is. It's not that we need you to feel everything that we're feeling as women. We just need you to be able to hold the container and allow yourself to be curious about what's happening. Explore, just ask questions about the emotional reality of your partner. It's less about the end goal of making your partner feel better or shifting anything. And it's more about asking the questions so that you can understand. When you can come from that perspective within an emotional container with someone, Wow, wow, wow. You will see how much they ah, drop in because no one's trying to sh change anything from them. They just want to understand so that they can show up better for them. And sometimes understanding is how you can show up for someone by allowing yourself to really drop in with that person. Oh, it feels very yummy in my body even just to think about this. Um, <laughs> I'm like, I'm getting activated. <laughs> so anyways, I told him like, yeah, this is not happening. And also I got triggered because I was like, kind of like, do you understand? Do you, I don't think you understand like, like how special this is that I'm like allowing you into my home, into my body, like, or I was about to, you know, like just all these things. Um, so yeah, that's over. <laughs> that dynamic is over. Um, I saw him at the gym this morning and I said hi. And, you know, I, I don't because I was able to be in my masculine energy and honor what I needed in my body to create safety. I don't have any bad feelings towards this person. Like maybe just disappointment because I was like, you could have had a really beautiful lovership, <laughs> but you couldn't meet me there. And that's OK. Um. And that's the thing. That's that's where the what I mean by no judgment value is. There's nothing wrong with where he's at and where he wants to relate. He even messaged me the day after and was just like, "I recognize that I got triggered because it was actually like a past relationship, and the woman like was doing everything to control me and take away my freedom." And I was like, "Okay." that's fine. That's not what I was doing. I was asking for safety and I, I made that very clear. So for me, it's like, I'm happy you figured it out the next day, but I knew exactly what I needed and I spoke up for it in the moment. <laughs> and that's like the level that I'm operating at. And that's what I ask for from the people that I'm operating in a deeper dynamic with. So what I mean by no value judgment is I just want someone different who can meet me there that's what I really started to realize about the feminine is like in order for us to really feel safe to drop into an emotional container with our partner we need to pick better people <laughs> I'm really on a roll today like literally this is what I've realized is before you open your body to someone can they hold you emotionally do they deserve to be inside of you like, do you realize that as a woman, you're like a fucking goddess and that you deserve to be worshipped and to be honored and to be cr created safety around you? Like this energetic bubble of like, I got you. We're, we're doing this. I have your back as the masculine is what creates the safety for the woman. This is what literally opens up her body, like physically in a sexual way, like literally safety. And... A lot of men think, oh, I'm a safe man. Like, I'm not going to hurt her. Physically, probably, yeah. But, like, can you create safety for her emotionally? Do you even know what that means? <laughs> a friend of mine said that I should make a course for men and, like, have all the women send their men to me so that I can, like, upgrade them. <laughs> if you are interested in this, leave a comment, and I will add it to my list of, of courses that I'm going to make soon. I feel really on an inspired and activated role of making content and creating impact. And I'm just like, let's go, you know, like I'm here for all of the expansion for myself, for you, for the whole fucking collective. Let's go. <sighs> so, 
yeah, recently, um, <laughs> I was talking about me stepping into my divine masculine within myself. And part of that is really honoring within my friend group who actually has my back in creating <laughs> safety. I'm laughing because this should be a no brainer. This should be like a, of course, we're going to create safety for you, Brittany. Like, of course we have your back. I mean, I hope that this is also what you have within your dynamics with people where they're just like, yeah, of course I have your back. <sighs> within my last breakup, I'm realizing that this is not a given for even some people that I consider to be some of my closest people in my life in the past. <laughs> I'm saying that in past tense because they're not, they're like, they're not my closest people anymore in this way. And it's really interesting. So again, I've been in a lot of partnerships, right? So I've, I've gone through a lot of heartbreak. I've, I've broken up with many men in my life and one woman. And in general, again, this is where I'm in my higher self perspective, where I'm like, I just want everyone to be friends. I don't want people to take sides. Like, it's okay if people want to be friends with my ex, like whatever, whatever. But this is like amicable breakups. This is like when it's just not working out and you can tell that it's not working out and you just decide to go your separate ways and like separate with love, right? That was not my last breakup. My last breakup was my ex-boyfriend betraying me with a woman that I thought was my friend and then gaslighting me and then they together were like communicating for weeks afterwards about how much they loved each other and how much they wanted to fuck each other and how much they're so excited to be together again and just really talking so negative about me to <laughs> and being so like cruel in the way that they were handling the dynamic with me the person who was dating my ex-partner for a year and a half so it was just kind of like, yeah, fuck Brittany. We have a lovership now. We're in love and we're just going to take this and go. Like, And even after that, when my ex went into psychosis, it was like I still showed up for him. I like created a safety for him. I got him resources that he needed in order to like not kill himself or die or something. I was so worried. I, in, this is after he betrayed me and I asked him to move out of my house and after so much bullshit that he did, like, and then after that, he just continues to make podcasts about me and talk about me negatively online. And this is not okay. This is abuse. This is, this is not creating safety for me. Like, this is not okay. So when I got back to the island... I started to realize that a couple of my friends didn't want to, they, they wanted to not take sides. And this is again something that is in the spiritual community a lot, is like, it's all love and light, let's all be friends, oh my God. And that I honor that, like that's how I operate normally when I am in a space where I feel safe, when I have someone who I broke up with who honors me and, and still has love for me and shows that in their actions and their words and their deeds. My ex-partner has not done that. He's done none of those things and he continues to do things that are potentially very harmful for me and hurtful. And so I have had to create a lot of safety around me while living on a very small island while also grieving the person that I thought he was and also having to build trust within myself because I thought I picked a good man. <laughs> and like, just I think I'm still experiencing a lot of shock. But what I'm also experiencing is a lot of power, a lot of my own divine masculine energy showing up in a way where it is fucking not okay anymore. So I had some conversations with some friends of mine where I said, like, look, this is what I need to create safety. You know, like, you were my friend for years before I introduced you to my ex-boyfriend and you only knew him through me. You guys never hung out one-on-one. -on -one. And how would you feel? Like, how would you feel if the person that you loved cheated on you 
gaslit you, like as in like tried to make you believe it was your fault, that no, it wasn't a big deal, nothing happened, and just literally lied to you and changed the story and was like a, like a, a rat just like sneaking around and manipulating everything. And then after you break up, you know, like you have to, sh you have the, you have the choice to show up for them because they're going through a mental breakdown and you show up for them and then they continue to create harmful content about you and can, and like do actions in your life that are actively against you and your highest good how would you feel if i hung out with that person and was like yeah i don't want to take sides it's fine everything's fine can't we all just be friends like <laughs> and i have had some friends who got it and were like oh fuck i'm really sorry um and I had some friends who just didn't get it. And that was okay. It's different values. This is what I mean about values is like, there's something in English, in the English language, an expression that we use where it's called fair weather friend. And this is like, yeah, we're friends when everything's going good. Like when, the, when it's sunny outside, right? When it's sunny outside, we're having fun. This is like someone like, yeah, everything's amazing. And that's a fair weather friend. That's like, yeah, you're good. You're the, you show up in the good times. But for me, a real friend is someone who shows up when things are really shitty, when it's scary, when you have to be brave. To me, it's being a coward if you're not showing up for your friends in those moments or if you're just literally choosing to disengage. You know, they say the opposite of love is not to hate someone. It's apathy. And most people in this world are so fucking apathetic, even about the people that they care about the most. In those moments when someone is going through a very hard time, are you there for them? Do you show up for them? Do you message them and say, hey, how can I show up for you? I'm here. I, I have your back. What do we need to do? Who do I need to yell at? You know, like just like the energy of like, let's go. We're doing this together. If you're if your friend if you know your friend is going through something and you just choose apathy, choose like I don't care, I'm not going to act, I'm not going to show up. You're not a good friend. You need to change yourself. <laughs> and for me, this is like really blows my mind because I show up with like 110% to all my friends. I I have their back. I'm here. I'm this fierce lioness mother energy just like who do I need to fuck up right now? And I've had times where my girlfriends here in the community, it's a very small community where they'll get screwed over by a guy where he's like cheating on them, shitty things are happening, they're being abusive. I will actively have their back in those situations. If I see that man, I do not have pleasant things to say to him. And I'm not saying you need to be violent. I don't, I don't agree with violence and words or actions or deeds, but there is boundaries, there is loyalty there is creating a safe container not just for ourselves but for the people that we love and wow it is so empowering for me to let go of the people in my life where it literally it, it turns out was leaking energy i was giving them my support my loyalty my energy my care my connections my community and they are only there for me in the good times. They do not show up in the moments when I actually need them. And if anything, they use this as an opportunity, some of them have, to fuck me over even more. So yeah, that's what's been going on in my life. It's really funny because there's a part of me that just wants to be like, it's fine. You know, there's this meme where like this cartoon character is like in a house and it's on fire and it's like, it's fine. <laughs> Sometimes I connect with that meme like hardcore because the, for me, like in my life, there's so many different levels of reality that are happening simultaneously. Like 
when I try to explain to someone, even just like a day in the life of Brittany or like a week in the life of Brittany, that's like, what was happening business wise? What was happening within my community that I lead? What was happening within my online course that I'm holding a container for these hundred people? What was happening within my ro romantic relationships? What was happening within my interpersonal relationship? What's happening in my body? What's happening with my dog and my cat? Like, what's happening with finding a villa on the island and like there's just so many things and it's all happening at the same time and again I find oh, my hair is doing funny things today I find it really beautiful to for me I, this is the beauty of life like maybe this is me being Scorpio but like give me depth of emotion give me depth of life this is the juiciness of life most people are not fully living their lives fully in their bodies because they don't want to face the things that make them uncomfortable. They don't want to face these shadow sides, these negative beliefs, because they worry that if they face them, they will actually find out that they are true. And they are not true. You deserve to feel worthy of connection and belonging and have your people show up for you and have your back purely for being a soul in this timeline of life. You don't need to do anything to deserve that kind of support and loyalty from the people that you love. And of course, you can do actions to prove that you, you know, like this is what showing up for each other is. It's like you have continuous touch points over time of I got your back, I'm showing up for you, I'm helping you, you have my back you know, you're showing up for me and helping me. And this is really beautiful. This is what tribe is. Most people do not understand what tribe is. They don't understand how to live in a community emotionally. This is all I've been doing my whole life from the day I was born. Even if the community that I was born into was a cult and suppressive, I still understood on a very somatic level, like the sensations going through my body of what it means to be in a deep tribe and what it means to show up for people. Growing up for me, that was a lot of people within my religion showing up in a physical way, maybe not so much an emotional way, but that's also really beautiful. You know, like when my dad was sick with cancer, uh, everyone within my religious community, they came together, they did meal plans, they showed up, they picked us up from school, they like helped my mom find a job, like gave us money. Like they were just like, we are here, we are your soul family, we got this, we're doing it together. And so from a very young age, I know what that feels like to show up for people. And this is how I operate. This is me and my integrity. You know, <laughs> this guy that I connected with this past week, the one I just shared the story on, he said to me, he's like, you know, before I came to the play party, I listened to a bunch of your podcasts. Like I basically been following you for six months. And I really had this feeling that there had to be something fake about you. And I was like, what do you mean? Like, do I come across that I am inauthentic? Because I actually feel like that's the thing that people like about me the most is like, you see what you see is what you get. And he said, no, it's not that. It's the fact that, um, it's the fact that it's like, it was like you were, it was too good to be true. It felt like who you were and what you were operating in was like the, the truth and the authenticity and you know, your empowerment and your creating, he's like, it just felt too good to be true. <laughs> and then he's like, and then I came to the play party and I realized, oh no, this is just who you are. And not only that, you're actually a very grounded down to earth person in real life. And I'm like, yeah, this is who I am. This is how I operate. And this is also what I deserve in return. So part of my power these days is really showing up for myself, speaking up for myself and allowing myself to let go of people who are not meeting my standards or my values and it's letting go with love i will always i will always send them love but that doesn't mean that they need to be part of my inner circle and because i am not leaking energy anymore my inner circle of friends here especially the ones here on the island wow we are getting so tight we are getting so connected and the energy is amplifying and expanding and exponentially just going into the vortex into the world not the vortex you know what i mean it just feels really good because it's like i know that they have my back 
I know that when if shit hits the fan, when, if something goes down where my ex-boyfriend is being like crazy again, they will step in for me. I don't even have to do anything. Like I have a barrier of protection around me. And because I have this barrier of protection around me, I feel that I'm able to connect to my anger a lot more recently because it's like, oh, I don't have to validate my experience. I just can just drop in and feel my feelings. And what I feel is like, this is not fucking okay. Like you don't speak about people like this. You don't talk about someone that you said you love. You don't treat people like this that you claim that you love. And all I can do now is create, continue to create the safety for myself and to heal and to build trust with myself again that I can pick a better man next time <laughs> and also to give a lot of space. This is what I'm doing lately with these men that I'm connecting with is so much space, so many conversations, so much touch points of like, is this really who you are? Let's look at your actions, consistent actions over time of how you show up, not just around me, but around my friends, like introducing them to all my friends, like vibe check. Do you like this person? Like asking my friends, like, do you like this guy? Can you just give me like your real like body check? Like how are you feeling when you interact with him? Because so many men that come into my vortex, wow, they are really beautiful men, like from a physical perspective, they're very powerful men. And, you know, they check a lot of the boxes on paper, what creates the most pleasure and safety in my body these days is actually feeling emotionally safe with this person and having my friends like them because whoever is going to be in my reality long term need to get along with my friends. And this is one of the biggest red flags with my last partnership is none of my friends liked him. They couldn't stand him. They didn't want to hang out with him. And, <laughs> and this was a big point of contention because at first they tried to be his friends and then he had no interest. He didn't make any effort to get to know them. If anything, he complained about them to me privately. And that's a red flag. That's something I'm no longer okay with. Because these people that are my soul family, they're like parts of my heart, you know, externally reflected. And so if you don't like them, then it's not going to work out because that means there's certain parts of me that you don't like because they have a resonance with a certain part of who I am and my psyche. And I'm not going to compartmentalize myself. So are we doing this? Or are we not doing this? You know? <laughs> and lately it's been, we're not doing this. <laughs> like, honestly... I have really started to enjoy, as the pain subsides, as I allow the anger through, as the grieving process continues, <sighs> there is this feeling of deeply f yumminess in my body. I don't know how else to say that. Just like feeling, like literally feeling the sensations of fully filling up my body like you know like when you do if you ever done yoga or like an ice bath and you come out of that experience and you just feel so in your body you just feel so good and like so in your body this is how i've been feeling with the idea that i am single i am safe i am fully supported by you know my source connection by my tribe and everything is in alignment things are expanding opportunities are exponentially coming into my world I have people who are like fighting over who's gonna like they want me to rent from them and like take over their space and do beautiful things there it's just like so many opportunities and I'm sharing this with you that if you go through a breakup if you've been in an abusive relationship if you've had betrayal it gets better <laughs> and also it's an opportunity for you to really do a hardcore check-in with yourself where are you not showing up within your divine masculine energy because that energy is what helps us to set boundaries that's energy is what is allowing our inner feminine to actually be intuitive because if, you, if you're a woman and you don't have your divine masculine energy creating this safe container around you, you're going to feel unsafe in the world and you're going to go around and try and find a man or a woman, whatever, whoever is this masculine leading energy 
that creates safety for your feminine. So instead of doing it yourself, you're going to go around and try and find this externally. The problem with that is that if you're not operating within your divine masculine energy within your body, you're actually operating within your wounded masculine because we both have masculine and feminine energy in us and it doesn't go away. So it's either one or the other. It's like, are you operating from a healthy perspective? Are you showing up for yourself? Are you operating from a victim perspective or feeling unsafe or like wounded, you know, these aspects, these shadow sides. And when you find a man to externally like help you because you feel unsafe in the world, they're only going to be able to match the vibration of your divine masculine or your masculine energy within yourself. And if your masculine energy within yourself is, I do not, I'm not able to exert this divine masculine. I feel in my wounded masculine, I feel unsafe. I feel unworthy. I feel insecure. I feel not good enough. Then that's the vibration of the man you're going to attract in or the woman who has masculine energy that you want. That is, they are going to have wounded masculine energy. And so for a while, you can cover up and these feelings of safety or feeling not worthy or not good enough or, you know, all these things from this external person. But eventually that is going to wear off and you're going to not only feel unsafe in the world, but you're going to have someone who probably creates more unsafety for you. <laughs> so it's like not only are you going to be back to square one within your psyche, within your energy field of like, I don't feel safe, but you're going to externally <laughs> be frustrated with the man right in front of you because they are not going to be able to hold this container for you because they only match the vibration of where you were at when you first started dating. Is this landing? Are you getting what I'm saying? I'll give you an example of myself. So, for me, I thought I was in my divine, I didn't really, honestly, before my last relationship, like, I didn't really understand what a lot of this stuff means. Like, I understood it from a studying it from like, you know, like, studying psychology and understanding somatic therapy and stuff. But it's very different <laughs> to understand it from a mental perspective even if you feel like you've integrated it within your body and it's very it's very different than actually having a lived experience because what I realized is that within my last dynamic I didn't feel safe completely in the world because you know I've been through a lot of trauma so I mean none of this is like good or bad right it just is it's remember we're going for the understanding not trying to fix it so if the goal is to understand Brittany's feelings of not feeling safe I felt unsafe in the world on levels that I wasn't consciously aware of. I attracted in my last partner who initially created these levels of safety and then very quickly actually created a lot more unsafety within my nervous system, emotionally, the way he dealt with other women sexually. Like there was so much bullshit. Even there was a moment where we got physically attacked. He didn't do anything to create safety in that moment for me. He just stood there. And I'm not saying that someone needs to be violent or create more violence, but if someone's attacking your woman, you step in between them. You create a barrier. You create safety. And so what ended up happening was I felt very unsafe by the end of our relationship, which is like back where I started. But this unsafety was actually projected outwards towards my ex-partner. So once we broke up, I really looked at this these last couple of months. I really looked at my negative beliefs around safety and really did some shadow work. I did some healing. I had therapy. I was like, wow, Brittany, you are so fucking safe in the world. You just need to get these people out of your life that are not safe for you. You need to clean up. You need to do... They, don't, they call it cleaning house energetically. And so I did this. I also went home and healed a lot of stuff with my family, which I didn't realize was creating unsafety in my body. And to understand that my family loves me, they're doing the best they can, they're super fucked up, you know? Like, it's just like under, or coming to understanding. Remember, this is the goal of life. It's not to try and fix anything because when you understand what happens and you understand where the origins are of these things, it naturally fixes itself within your psyche. So I finally understood the core of why I felt unsafe in the world. And I was able, through this understanding, 
to heal it and let it go and really step into the knowingness that I am very safe and I'm very supported and I'm very loved by myself, by God, universe, source, by my soul family, by my community. And therefore, one, I don't need an external masculine to create the safety for me. Like, wow, that's exciting. That's, that's relieving. And also, whoever I end up drawing into my life, they have to meet my standard of safety within my divine masculine, within myself, that I give myself. They have to meet that or above. Otherwise, they don't, it's just not, a, it's not a match. Like, we can just be friends, you know? Or maybe even not friends, because someone who's creating safety for me from the masculine in my life, I have so many beautiful men in my life who just get it. They're loyal. They understand. They're like, who do I need to fuck up, you know? Like, if someone hurts me, they're, they have my back. So even if you're going to be a friend in my life who's a guy, I need you to, I choose for you to be that. And that's really beautiful. So many people are so worried about disconnection that they don't take up space of what they actually need in their life to create safety for themselves. Are you so afraid of speaking up about what you need to create safety that you're not speak that you're, that you're <laughs> well, uh, words, so many people are wanting connections so badly that they give up their authenticity. They give up what they need in order to create safety for themselves. So they're at that moment choosing a false sense of connection over their authentic truth and safety. Because when you're not speaking up for yourself, you're not going to feel safe in your, in your dynamics because... There's no foundation. Where, where are we going from here? How are we building a relationship, even if it's a friendship, if there's no foundation of what creates safety for each other? And in order to create that safety and that foundation, you need to understand what your values are. You need to understand what creates safety for you, what makes your heart feel safe to open up, what makes you feel safe to connect with someone. And this is different for everyone. For me, my baseline values is this person needs to be loyal and safe for me emotionally, energetically, and I need to feel more connected to myself, my higher self, my tribe by having a connection with this person. Like it needs to be like this expansive, energetic connection. This is for people that are close to me in my life. And also we need to have, the third one is that we need to have the same soul mission. And that we don't need to be doing exactly the same things in the world, but there's this general vibe of like, we are going the same direction and, you know, we've been through a lot and we've seen a lot in the world and we've played a lot and we've grown a lot to the point where we are able to give back. We are choosing to use our energy to create more beautiful things in the world. That's someone that is close to me. We have the same soul mission in that way. <sighs> There's so much more I can say. But I feel energetically like I'm done. Like I just like said a lot and now I'm done. So I'm going to honor my body. Uh, tomorrow's my birthday, um, which is very exciting. I have a lot of juicy plans. Um, I'll update you later about what all of them are. But just know that it involves a lot of adventure, soul connection, dancing, and mystery. I feel like with me, there's always some mystery, even for myself. I'm like, there's something that's going to happen this week that's magical and mysterious, and I don't know what it is, but I'm here for all of it. Let's go. As the Israelis say, yalla. <laughs> uh, I've been hanging out with a lot of Israelis recently just because they are the dominant nationality here on the island now. Um, anyways, okay, so I'm sending you all lots of love, and I hope you have an amazing day.